Disney friends and family, it's Nancy here. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about my dining experience at Remy. I talked about specialty dining and my dining experience at Apollo in my last video. If you haven't had the chance to check that out, I'll leave the link in my description below. So Remy is one of their two adult-only dining restaurants. Unlike Apollo that is available on all four ships, Remy is only available on the Disney Dream and the Disney Fantasy. It is located in Deck 12 opposite of Apollo in the aft. Remy's decor was inspired by Disney Pixar's animated film Ratatouille. If you pay close attention, you might actually see some incorporations from the film, but it's very subtle and not overwhelming to keep up the sophisticated ambience that Disney was going for. So Remy by far is the most luxurious experience that they have aboard Disney Cruise Line. It serves both American and French cuisine. The gourmet selections of the French menu was specially crafted by Remy. <gasps> Just kidding, it was specially crafted by Scott Honnell and advised by three Michelin star chef, Arnaud Lamont. Remy offers several dining experiences such as Remy dinner, Remy's champagne brunch, Remy's dessert experience, Petit Asset de Remy, and Remy's wine pairing experience. So if you want to read the description for these, I'll leave a link in the description below. Remy adheres to a strict dress code that is formal, while Paula was semi-formal. So if you're dining at both, make sure you pack accordingly. Formal dress means cocktail dresses for women, and men have to wear jackets, pants, no jeans, and they have to wear dress shoes. So let's now talk about my dining experience at Remy, and whether or not I think it's worth it to pay extra on top of your cruise fare. Once dinner is booked and you are aboard the ship, you are actually invited to go to Remy's wine room and pre-select the wine for that dinner. When you arrive for dinner, your server will guide you to your table while pointing out the interesting aspects of the decor. Dinner begins with a complimentary colette, a chilled champagne cocktail prepared at your table. The colette, cleverly named after the female chef in the movie, contains the creme de cassis, which is a black currant liquor a splash of orange flavored liquor, a little bit of vodka, touch and jeer, champagne, which carries the entire drink, and some dried pineapple cubes to add an extra kick of acidity. Immediately after, your server will describe the prefix menus. They have the American menu and the French menu. The French menu is called the Saveur menu, which means flavor, and the American menu is known as the Goût menu, which is, means taste. Each menu has five courses, which includes the appetizer and the dessert, it's highly recommended to try one of each of the menus, so my husband ordered the American while I ordered the French menu. Once you've selected your course for the night, the entire experience unfolds in front of you like a work of art. They start you off with an amouge bouche, which literally translates to mouth the muser, and this is basically your palate opener. It's not included in the menu, and it's up to the chef to decide what to give to you, so this basically shows you the creativity of the chef. Our mousse bouche was a foam biscuit and also two pairs of cannabis that had foie gras and cauliflower with lime zest. After the palate cleanser, your server will bring you the bread for the night. So for us, it was a lovely soft sourdough and it came with three types of butter. So it came with a red pepper butter, a cheddar butter, and a seaweed butter. And my favorite was the cheddar butter. The French menu by Chef Arnold Lamont starts you off with an appetizer that's called maize chauffois. So that basically translates to hot and cold corn. To me, it seemed like mashed potatoes made out of corn. Next was the umad du main, which is Maine lobster that's cooked in butter, flavored with leek, buckwheat, garnished with buckwheat chip, garlic flour on top. It was served with a lobster bisque sauce with white wine cream and butter. This was pretty good. After that, we had the sole pleni mer, which is the sole fish. It was glazed with fish juice paired with leek blonde and baby leeks and served in a shellfish sauce. So I personally thought the sauce was a little bit fishy and I told the server that I didn't like it very much and they were happy to actually give me a new plate without the sauce on it and that made it so much more appetizing to me. My favorite dish was probably their boeuf wagyu and that is their wagyu beef. It was grilled a la plancha with a hint of black pepper served with carrot montage and flavored with an almond puree and lemon zest and overall I thought that was the absolute most perfect slice of wagyu meat I've ever had. So I want you to keep in mind that the French menu is mostly about sauces that complement the dish so if you aren't too big on sauces you might 
benefit from ordering the American menu over the French menu. The American menu created by Scott Hunnell starts off with a Langenstein for appetizer, which is a Norwegian lobster sometimes known as the Dublin Bay Prawn. It is paired with a roasted and pureed cashew and caviar with a splash of dashi sauce. So it pretty much tasted like lobster. The dashi sauce, although a fish sauce, was not too overwhelming and further enhanced the flavor of the dish. Next was the Glacier 51 Toothfish, otherwise known as the Chilean Seed Bass. It is grilled on one side, a la plancha, served with black puff rice and black butter sauce with a Jägermeister flavor. Kind of tasted like black licorice. After that, we had the Poulet Rouge which was organic chicken breast that was cooked al plancha, served on top of barley porridge and shiitake mushrooms. And now for my husband's favorite, the lamb. So the dish contained two ounces of roasted tenderloin lamb with pistachio on top and about two ounces of braised baby lamb with a fried eggplant puree. The center of the dish had duck fat and cucumber served with lamb juice and he thought this was delicious. After the main course, guests will enjoy a complimentary gourmet cheese service. The server pushes a cheese trolley to the table and will serve you an assortment of cheeses. So they have everything from hard cheeses to medium cheeses like brie to soft cheeses like blue cheese. Basically from stinky to extra stinky. So don't get me wrong, I love cheeses, the assortment of cheeses were very good, but at this point I just wanted my dessert. The dessert that was included in the French prefix menu was a mango aloe vera and However, they didn't give me that and they actually gave me something that was even better and so I can't complain at all. It was a dark chocolate dessert. It was dark chocolate base with a dark chocolate crisper with like two gold nuggets and cocoa shavings on top. The dessert for the American menu was a raspberry mascarpone. So mascarpone is basically heavy cream and citric acid along with a raspberry syrup. It was perfect balance between sweetness and tartness. There's no shortage of dessert here and if you're a chocolate lover, then you'll be in dessert heaven. After dessert, our server gave me a rose, a box of chocolates and some lollipops and they gave my husband the check. So I said this about Paolo too. The only thing that I disliked about dining in, at Remy was dining in the after the ship. Since it's higher up and towards the back, you're going to feel the swaying of the ship a little more after dinner, especially after eating so much. So, you know, make sure you take whatever you need to take for your motion sickness. So, is Remy worth the upcharge? I would have to say it depends, and it really depends on the person. For me, I think it's an experience that you have to try at least once. Would I book Remy for every single cruise? Probably not. I think I enjoyed the service at Remy a lot more than I enjoyed the actual food. In terms of what was more appetizing, I think Paolo was better. I think it's a little unfair to be comparing the two. I feel like at Remy it's more about the service and the art of dining. If you do decide to dine at Remy, I know that you'll have a magical experience and it's definitely going to be something that you'll always remember. Well, it's that time again, so happy cruising and happy dining. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Alright, thanks everybody for watching this video. If you like this video, hit the like button, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and turn on your notifications so you get updates for new videos. Hope to see you again soon.